everyone welcome back in my studio so yesterday I started painting the underpainting for this portrait and a bit of the portraiture but it's just the beginning so I am going back which is literally the next day and I'm going to work with it a little bit but what's interesting to note is that <clears throat> I realized that certain ways of working painting isn't working for me so for example something that takes a long time to dry like the oil paint this paint here is nowhere near dry it's been yesterday that I applied it it will probably take another few days up to a week for me to be able to go over it this is definitely not my style of work I do not like specifically when it comes to a face or a portrait I don't like working in different stages that have such a long gap between I like to see for example here I was able to build on the face although it's far from being finished I already have layered the the groundwork for it and so this is just something that I'm experimenting with, but I can tell that I'm not enjoying the fact that I'm looking at this, it's just the beginning and then I have to wait for it to be able to layer something over the top because I kind of want to do it in this one go almost. Now I don't mind working in stages when it comes to for example abstract art in fact i do enjoy coming back and i had a painting that took me months to finish because i just wasn't sure with how it looked and i wanted to keep on building on it and that felt right but when it comes to a face it's not a process that i am enjoying then this other one which was faster to dry with the background. I really enjoy that. And then on top I used some acrylic paint. Now that's something I could potentially do. I could also maybe try some acrylic gouache and then use some pencils on top as well. So I might do that on this painting here. For now I'm going to work a little bit more on this background. So I applied some oil pastels which I haven't set. I think I will avoid those areas here where they are not set and I'm going to go over with some fixative. So with this painting here I can't work on top of it now because I've got the oil pastels that haven't been set. So I'm going to get my fixative and I will go outside in the garden. It's actually lovely sunny weather today so I'm just going to quickly jump outside, spray it and come back. I don't think I'll be able to show you the, the spraying action because I only have two hands and this camera is a big camera. So I'm just gonna spray it. So it says here that it's a vinyl resin, an alcohol base, and it dries completely transparent with a clear and glossy film to protect oil pastels against dust and smearing. So it also gives you a suggestion that rather than doing one thick coat, do a few very fine mists. I'll try to follow all of that but the main thing is I just want this not to be tacky or kind of movable because you can see I can pick it up with my finger so those are oil pastels which are these they never fully dry unless you use a fixative and then this one here this is the oil sticks which I have now put away but they are the big sanelier oil sticks which is basically oil paint in a stick form they're quite chunky I love working with them for abstract art however not sure how I'm sort of enjoying this 
in portraiture and they do dry completely solid within few days up to a week depending on how thick you layer them but also it is advisable to also set them with a fixative afterwards i am going to just take care of this painting and come back and work on this one so a quick update I just went and sprayed it a few times, really thin kind of mists, and then I've done it three maybe times. And I do feel like it's less tucky around the area where it was really tucky, you could see the color come off. So that's good. I might wait for it to fully dry, maybe like for 24 hours, and then revisit it uh, maybe with one or two more sprays and see how it gets on. I mean, I'm not expecting it to be as completely dry as acrylic. I don't know if you can get oil pastels that dry, but at least I could work over them, hopefully with another medium, and it won't cause, like, if I go over with acrylic paints, I hope that they're not going to lift off, if that makes sense. Okay, so with that in mind, let's now kind of get a bit of, bit of work done here on this painting. I'm going to Put this one to a side as well. So I've used Dalaroni FW acrylic ink in a couple of different colors here. I have I think antelope brown and I popped some of the fluorescent pink in here for that bit of color and I really love this feels a lot more me I have to say when I'm looking at the previous background let me just pull it back up. So when I'm looking at them side by side this feels so heavy but i'm trying something because i want to achieve this more of a solid opaque look with build up textures so i'm going to add more texture on top and have the red peep through from underneath like i have this sort of lovely color coming through here i love the fact that it's a little bit translucent and i have a bit more variety in the brush strokes and those kind of leaks and how the color bursts and moves and all these kind of beautiful variety in pattern that I get from acrylic ink feels a lot more me. The hope here is through experimenting I will find a way of how to create portrait paintings so that I can see my style through it. So this, all of this is basically me. I love it. You can see a lot of these techniques that I use in my abstract art but I want to somehow incorporate the portraiture. Then over the top I went with a mix of, what did we have here? I think some heavy body acrylics that I used in two colors and then there was a little bit of the wet background still from the acrylic ink that I also mixed in with those two colors. So today I want to think of creating a face. So for example the hair here I could do as a last point and I could use those oil sticks because then I don't mind waiting for it because everything else will be ready. So potentially I'll leave the hair as the last element and then today focus on the face. I'm going to try this extra soft black pencil by Faber-Castell. It's their pit oil base. So I'm kind of going to try that by placing some facial features here. Maybe see if I if I like it or not. I find the further back I'm holding the pencil, the more I'm getting a broken up line. So let's add some color into here. So I have some neo colors here and I think I want to just see add a 
a bit of maybe shadowing. So these are fun because they're water soluble. They always lay up quite nicely. Over other mediums. And then if I take a brush and just add a little bit of water, we can get the pigment to move. I think I need a different brush for this. I'll use one of those Chinese brushes that I have here. I don't really use them for watercolor, so I think it would work nicely. So here we're going to try and basically build. We're trying to build a story and the story means we're going to go through different values, dark and, and light. And hopefully I just need something really quite black so I have a few good black options here we've got the Pano China marker that goes on top of everything and then we have a couple of things there's also paper glass plastic and metal pencil it's also water soluble by Stabilo so it's nice and dark and you can use it with a bit of water and then we also have graphite aquarelle by faber castell in 2b and i've got a current dash graph wood and i don't think this is a water soluble in 9b so something that's really really black i think the blackest out of them all is probably going to be this and if there's still something wet then of course it won't it won't um, go on nicely and you can't get it to a thin point and I'm going to try and add something I can create a smoky eye with so if you have any knowledge in makeup at this point hopefully it would come in quite handy yeah this looks pretty just make it run in it's like as if I'm applying makeup to her so some areas are like to be Kind of wet and smudged and others are like for their mark making so for example this one here I like the way it looks okay so for the eyes I'll leave it as it is and I might use a graphite for the eyebrow like so and then let's see for the ear we need just a bit of something And lips so for the lip I think I would go with something quite popping remember when I was saying I want to play with value so we'd have different type of so this would be a light value and then we'd have please somewhere medium and dark so within the face I want to also have fun like that so I'm just going to go in with this paint, just give her that lip. And I want to mix up a nice cheek color. So I've got some process magenta and some flame orange, which I'm going to mix up first and then mix mix them in the bottle and then mix a the color okay so I'm going to use a few drops of flame orange a few drops of processed magenta and hopefully mix a lovely brush or blush color so I want something quite striking I might leave it as it is or I might just add a tiny bit of water to create some structural difference because remember we have got lovely texture underneath this paint and so you want it to come through a little bit so that's looking quite good 
So I want to intensify around her eyes a little bit more and I've got two burnt siennas. This is the color that I really like by Amsterdam and on paper it just does something to the fiber of the paper where it doesn't look great but here we're going to go over actually I'm gonna go straight in here be courageous but here we have the base of the acrylic paint so that should be all right so now just like that so that kind of looks interesting I'm starting to really really like what we have here I'm just gonna move that little spot from her face okay so next thing i feel like she needs some sort of outfit here and i'm going to add a bit more of the orange and then create these kind of marks to suggest that she's wearing some sort of a blouse or a dress and I think the key here is to let the paint sing so we have a lot of interest going on we have this area of interest this and that and then we have some leaks on this side with a bit more darkness so I think she is looking really really interesting somehow I want the lip to pop a little bit more and I wonder if I apply some of this beautiful orange on top whether that's gonna just lift it ever so slightly give it that brightness so i'm going to lift it because i feel like it's just a bit the same color then she needs a bit more red i think so i've got this red which is vermilion and i think that would be a better choice there we go, that really glows. I'm going to apply it nice and thickly and leave it at that. So the next thing we need to do is, I think she just needs some hair. I have auditioned a couple of colors. so. Here we have the Mars, what was it again? Mars Red, I think. Yes, Mars Red on its own. And obviously tonally, it works really well. It just kind of pulls together everything. But then I thought maybe I want something quite contrasting and bring in some teal or like a turquoise type of color, which could also be quite interesting. So I quite like this teal with it. For her hair color maybe even something blue but i feel like the blue would be just way too much here and the teal could work actually but then i feel like this is more coherent with the piece so i'm going to take a minute wait for these elements to dry at least and kind of do a test so just use the oil stick right on the paper and just do one stroke something that i could you know integrate and blend and mix into another color if i don't like it so i think i'll start with this color because i think it works the best and i might bring a streak or two of of this color into it so that we have mainly this beautiful red hair with a bit of that contrast because i'm not sure i would enjoy her with this hair it kind of takes away from these beautiful blobs there and to be honest with you just even without the hair i like her quite a bit but i feel like with the hair we are going to create a more finished piece so while waiting i decided to try something different and try and build up texture with this heavy body iridescent bright gold by liquitex heavy body acrylics and then once that dries i'm going to layer on top some of the oil sticks and have the gold texture come through i think this could be something quite nice i'm just really going to go quite thickly here and i know that will take forever to dry but um, I think I'm willing to 
we'll go with that. So something like that, which could suggest like a little hat or it could suggest maybe, I don't know. I'm gonna actually take it up here. Maybe like a windy day and her blonde hair is going up in the air. I love creating that sort of mysterious look and for the viewer to finish the thought in their own mind so what it could be. So I'm going to leave it at that and I've covered some of her eyebrows so I can still lift it if I wanted to and potentially bring it lower down here. And then go in with the texture again. So that will take a few hours, maybe even like longer because it's really thick up here. I'm going to show you a close up so you can see how thickly it is layered and built on. And once it's dried, then I'm going to use oil stick in this color and go over some of those areas and have the gold come out. And I'm not going to cover all of it, just some have that lovely play of color. Okay, I think this is it for today. We will have to wait for another time to continue and finish. Maybe I'll put something on her neck or find another little detail that I want to add. Maybe something with her eyes to make them stand out a little bit more. But so far, so good. I might emphasize underneath the eyes as well. But again, like I said, at this point, I'm going to give her a little break. And I love that this neon pink is still showing through and all the interesting areas we still left them as they are. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.